we're going to do a coil test. Um, the bike's been running a little rough. Anything between 4,000 to about 6,000 RPM. The bike's really sluggish. Uh, sounds like it's misfiring. Um, I don't have anything right now to turn it on and show you because I've already taken the whole bike apart. But I've already changed the spark plugs. We changed them to some iridium. These are the spark plugs we ended up changing them to. Gapped them to six millimeters, um, what it was said in the book. Uh, put k and filter, new clutch, new chain, new a lot of new stuff on the on the bike to get it up to you know to running back to where it needs to be. Uh, and we're still having problems. When I got the spark plugs, I had asked if it needed coils. I said, don't worry, you usually don't. Those don't go bad. But I've been having problems with it still. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove them and we're going to test the coils to see which one is bad. Um, okay, so just in here you're going to wiggle it. There we go. And so we're gonna do that for all the other ones and quick again. All right, so we've got our coils kind of set up here. What you're gonna need is a voltmeter. Um, you're gonna set it to your ohms. Um, and if we see online, we've got our, this is for a 2007 Yamaha R6. Um, OEM specs for other years are gonna differ so just look online for the resistance that you need for your type of bike uh, for the R6 the, what we can use uh, or what the specs are as on the primary and I'll show you what that means is uh, from 1.19 to 1.6 ohms and on the secondary uh, resistance test uh, from 8.5 to 11.5 ohms so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna test the primary the primary consists of this you're gonna test um, this area first. So, all right. So we're gonna do our primary resistance test, and this is when you connect the. Uh, I guess if you're looking at the coil straight up or from the front, <clears throat> your negative is gonna be on your right, and your positive is gonna be on your left. So when you put them on. And we're right within specs. So that's our primary. Now the secondary uh, I'm trying to do this. Uh, consists of this is gonna be your negative right on that say. And your secondary test is gonna consist of putting your black lead there and then inserting your red lead in here, touching the metal. And that'll give you your secondary resistance test. So we'll set this one aside. Let's just see. What can... Let's see what happens. So we're sitting at 9.20, which is within specs of 8.5 and 11.5 ohms or kilo ohms. <clears throat> This is how we have it right here. Now the one that I've been suspecting is coil three, which is this. And I'm just using this plier just to hold it in place for now. So once again we're gonna do our primary resistance test. So we're within specs there. All right. So now we'll do our secondary resistance test. And if you can somewhat see there, it's saying 7.82, which is way below. Um, the specs that the resistance needs to be at. <clears throat> now you gotta remember that this is also doing a K 
cold test the there's another way you can do them to test them all also because when you're running the bike one of the things that you'll notice is that this problems usually happen once the bikes warmed up which means that if you want to get accurate readings to what the bikes doing you might want to stick them in the oven and heat the coals up to about the temperature that the bike gets and retest your coals um, and you might get different readings there because you know the coals are warmed up and that's usually when your problems come now as a cold test this is the one that's giving me the problem so I've ordered new ones um, and that's hopefully gonna fix the problem I'll let y'all know what what ends up happening because I know that I'm not the only one with this problem and it's and it seems to be kinda hard to pinpoint just because so many things everything from bad gas to bad uh, spark plugs to the coils all that can can have the same effect <clears throat> and so that's how we do our cold test hopefully just another thing that I found could be pretty helpful would be that uh, to make it easier for you to reach in there this thing can be removed very easily and the boot also just kind of show you the separate parts that it comes in. Uh, that'll make testing this bottom side just a little easier.